All right, we have John Strang out again. Yeah. Nice to see you again on this beautiful day. We talked last year. You were up in a pear tree about mm -hmm. 30 feet. Yeah. You scurried up there like a squirrel. We are up here on the hill. We talked about last year. You kind of want to be up a little bit. Why, is, why do we pick this location? Well, this is high, and we're about to get a major freeze coming up. <laughs> oh, and, boy. Uh, when we have a freeze, it doesn't necessarily kill the trees. It kills the flowers on the tree, and you lose the crop for that year. So right. getting it up high, when we have a radiation freeze, if we're up high, we're in that area where it's a little warmer as opposed to down in a low area. Cold air is much heavier. It sinks down into the low areas, and if your trees are down there, they're going to be frosted uh, much more frequently, and you'll lose your crop. Well, we've got a, a list of uh, home, recommended home fruit varieties that people can find. We've got fertility guidelines. If you'll find nursery source lists and everything else, that you can locate them with mail order nurseries. Now, when you're looking for fruit trees, there are some varieties that grow a lot better than others. Now, a lot of people go to the local nursery, got this at a local nursery. This is a golden delicious tree right here. That one does pretty well for us in Kentucky, but okay. the nurseries sell varieties that people know not necessarily ones that look that do well for us. If you get disease resistant apple trees, you can get apples that have resistance to fire blight, cedar apple rust, powdery mildew, and apple scab. It doesn't eliminate your spray program because we've still got insects out there, but it makes it a lot easier for a homeowner to grow fruit. So we're looking at varieties like Enterprise and Wine Crisp and Liberty. Sundance is another yellow one that does really well. So. We have, uh, no, no, I can't say we, you dug a okay. hole here. You pointed out what I already knew, we got a lot of clay. Well, clay is just soil with a real small particle size. It hold nutri holds nutrients very well, but it dries out very slowly. You know, you need to do a soil test, adjust the pH to about 6.5, and get your phosphorus and potassium and magnesium incorporated into the soil. If you don't do that, you need to poke some holes around the tree and drop it in, because that's mm -hmm. the only way it's gonna get down into the root zone. So. Getting this tree off to a good start is very important. After that, all we apply on an annual basis is nitrogen, pretty much. Hmm. We like to have a nice deep soil, uh, something that's three feet deep or so, so you've got water holding capacity to size the fruit up. And a lot of people don't know that if you dial 1-800-JOHN-STRANG, dig a hole, <laughs> he'll come to your house for free. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh, the Johnny man. Appleseed of the, of the... <laughs> well, Johnny Appleseed was in our area years ago. No kidding. He was a pioneer. He walked around and spread a lot of apple seeds around, and it got a lot of apples growing in the, in the United States, and in Kentucky in particular. What was his motivation to do so? Well, apples are not native to the United States. They originated in Kazakhstan, and so uh, they were brought over here. A lot of the fruit that we grow have been brought over from other countries, peaches and pears and apples. The pioneers were interested in apples, you know, they didn't have all the, the fruit and the produce that we have now available to them. So apples were one of their mainstays and they used a lot of apples to make hard cider. You can see that tree hasn't rooted, it's starting to throw a few little roots out, but that ball wouldn't stay together. So we're going to set this in the hole, and I dug that hole a little deeper than I needed. When you plant a tree, a lot of people, this is a heavy clay soil, they'll say, well, I'm going to bring some really good soil and put that in around the tree to get it off to a good start. Not a good idea. This hmm. is a heavy clay soil. You bring soil up from down the creek bed, put it in there. <clears throat> this makes a flower pot and it's liable to drown your tree. So you want to put that tree in to the soil that it was growing in to force those roots. Now this is the wrong time to plant this tree. This soil is way too wet. What is the ideal time if you, if you had a situation and a time that, that is the best, what would that be? Uh, that would be uh, November in pear trees and tart cherry trees. The other ones are typically planted in the spring, but that will maximize the growth on that tree. Now, that tree is set wrong. We've got a graph union on this tree, and it's right here. That's where this tree was budded. We need to have that graph union above ground. Pretty well set. Now, once we've planted that tree, we want to straighten it out and we want to water it in good. We need to settle that soil around the roots. Now we need to fertilize that tree. We want to put on about a quarter pound of this 33% nitrogen material. We're going to put on about half of this. We just sprinkle this around the tree. That The rain will take this nitrogen in. That's why we're putting nitrogen in on an annual basis. We need to do something to 
keep the rabbits off of this oh, tree. Man, I got, got the rabbits too. You've got two choices. You can put one of these spiral guards on that's white, or I like hardware cloth. And uh, this, you can get the spray material in much easier. Well, we don't want any branches lower than about 18 inches to the ground. So we've got about four good limbs here. They're not really well spread ar out around the tree, but we'll go with these. I'm going to tip these just lightly. This will cause them to start branching out down here. When we prune apple trees, we prune them to make them structurally strong. These are nice wide branch angles. These are strong limbs. They'll support a good fruit load. This is not. This is a real narrow branch angle here. That one's not good. That one's not good. That one's not too bad, but I'm going to force some more limbs down about right here. And so we're going to head this tree. Uh, you can put spreaders in the, in the tree if you want to spread them out a little bit. We like to have about a 65 degree angle coming off the trunk. That reduces the vigor of the limb, encourages spur development, which is formation of flower buds. Apples produce their fruit on spurs. So that's it. We're, we're ready for some warm temperatures. <laughs> this is going to give me something to look forward to and something to watch out for. And if I have any issues, I'll probably call you. And, okay. and, and I thank you so much for your time and your years of experience that really helped me out because I know nothing about that's this. That's what we're there for anytime. Well, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.